If you've been following the road to the Olympics for climbing, you may have heard the term universality place or tripartite place. Basically a well-intentioned spot in the qualification pathway with the goal of getting climbers to the Olympics from less represented countries. But I'm gonna explain why that may be out of reach and why the universality place is actually one extra ticket for the best climbers in the world. So what is a universality place or just what is universality? Well, universality is this Olympic concept of trying to involve athletes from all around the world, not just from the big countries, not just from the rich countries, but athletes from all over competing at their Olympic games. And the way that manifests itself in climbing is through this universality place, which is basically a priority qualification pathway to hopefully support climbers from countries who don't typically have a lot of Olympic representation. But the catch is there's still some criteria. It's not just a free space to whoever shows up. There is a bit of a high bar set to make uh, to earn the requirements to get this spot, especially for climbers from these countries that we don't hear much about. So let's talk about what it takes to be eligible and then who might actually earn those spots, if anybody. So what makes you eligible to earn a universality place? Well, uh, aside from the basic stuff like meeting the minimum age or not being banned from the sport, not being banned from the Olympic Games, uh, there's basically three main criteria. And the first one is that you are from a country that is historically underrepresented at the Olympic Games. And the way we define that for this purpose is we take the number of athletes that your country has sent to the last two Olympic Games. So that is Tokyo 2020 and Rio 2016. They just count the summer stuff for the summer games. We take the number of individual athletes you have sent to those two games, we average it, and if it's eight athletes or less, you're on the list, all right? Now, we're not just talking climbers, we're talking all individual sports, okay? So Canada, for example, probably sends hundreds of athletes to each summer games. So if we sent, say, 200 athletes to uh, Tokyo and we sent 100 athletes to Rio, our average there of individual athletes is 150. So we obviously don't meet the criteria, but for those small countries that have sent an average of eight individual athletes or less to the last two games, you are on the list. The second criteria is that you must qualify, you yourself personally, not your country, you must qualify for the Olympic Qualifier Series. Now, if you don't know what the Olympic Qualifier Series is, I recommend you read the Climbing Qualification Pathway Explainers by Natalie Berry at UK Climbing or by Rory at Inside Climbing, links down below so you can understand those. But the Olympic Qualification Series is basically the third of the three ways that you can earn a spot to the Olympics in climbing. It is gonna be a series of three competitions featuring the best climbers in the world, duking it out kind of like World Cups. And at the end of those three comps, the top ranked, I think five speed climbers and 10 lead climbers get to go on to the Olympic games, okay? So first criteria was be on that list of countries. Second criteria is qualify for this particular uh, uh, Olympic qualifier series. Now to qualify for this, you either have to have a good world ranking at the end of the year, which frankly climbers from these countries probably won't have, or more importantly, there's actually a little sub-universality uh, place just to get to these qualification events. Um, and for that, you just have to be the best ranked climber in that discipline from that list of countries that we just talked about. So if we say uh, like Honduras and, uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, North Macedonia are two good examples, if there is one climber ranked 100th and one climber ranked 110th, that's obviously too low to qualify in the normal route, but because you're both from um, uh, universality eligible countries, the best of those climbers will get a chance to go to the OQS series. So that is requirement number two. And lastly, requirement number three is not just qualifying for those events, but at the end of those OQS comps, those three events, you have to rank basically in the top 75% of the athletes involved. So for the combined lead and boulder event, there are 48 participants, you gotta come in the top 36. For the speed event, there are 32 athletes, you gotta come in the top 24, all right? So the three criteria again, be from the select list of countries, two, qualify for the OQS series, which will be held in the spring, and three, come in the top 75% 
of the athletes in that series ranking from the OQS. Okay. You got it. Cool. Now let's take a look at the climbers that are actually involved in this process, the actual countries and figure out if anybody really stands a chance. So who can realistically earn one of these universality spots? Well, first we got to talk about the countries that are eligible. So, uh, the International Judo Federation actually kindly put together a list of all of the countries that meet the criteria to be, uh, uh, to receive universality places and actually 93 countries countries. So that's quite a long list. But if you take that list and then just reduce it down to the number of countries that actually have, uh, member federations in the IFSC for climbing, that list shrinks from 93 down to just nine. And those countries are Andorra, Iceland, North Macedonia, Malta, Cambodia, Kuwait, Nepal, El Salvador, and Honduras. All right. So you got to be from one of those nine countries to be eligible for this universality place in climbing for 2024. Now, in terms of qualifying for the OQS, the Olympic qualifier series, if you're from one of those countries, do any of those athletes actually stand a chance of earning the world ranking points to qualify by being top 48 in lead in Boulder or top 32 in speed? Well, no, right? Um, so far, there are only two athletes from those countries that have any world ranking at all. They both happen to be women in the combined lead and Boulder discipline. It is from Iceland, Svana Bjarnson in 93rd of 112. And from North Macedonia, Sarah Tchaikovska uh, in 112th of 112. So not looking good so far. Now you may say, why are they ranked so low? Or why are there only two athletes on that list? Surely, you know, there must be more involved. Is it really just two climbers? Well, there are a lot more climbers from these countries that have participated. In fact, the IFSC tried to make that a priority by flying over a bunch of athletes from five different countries. It was uh, uh, Cambodia, El Salvador, Honduras, Iceland, and North Macedonia. They brought them to Europe for a month to train for free at gyms, to go to the IFSC headquarters, which I that actually kind of would have been a little bit fun to see inside, um, but also to compete at Brixen for bouldering, to compete at Innsbruck for boulder and lead, and to compete at Villars for lead and speed and give them a chance to earn those points. And of course they did compete. And of course they didn't do well enough. They did not come in the top 80 in any of those disciplines to earn world ranking points, all right? That should kind of tell you where we're at, okay? They went to these World Cups and couldn't crack the top 80. Or for combined, they couldn't crack top 80 in both Boulder and Lead. You do need to do that in both to get that world ranking. So after all of that, there's only two climbers on the list, all right? So you're not going to come in the top 48 in the world ranking. You're not going to come top 32 for the speed world ranking. So how are we going to get to the OQS instead? Well, it is that last little qualifying spot. And all you have to do for this is to be the best climber in the world ranking of that list of universality countries, that short list of nine countries. If you can be the best climber in your discipline from that set of countries, then you are good as gold. And again, at the moment, only one category and one gender has names eligible in that list. It is Svana and Sarah that I mentioned. And at the moment, because Svana is ranked highest in 93rd, she is currently the one that would be at this moment selected to go to the OQS. Now, of course, there's still a chance for all of these climbers to get more world ranking points by competing at the world championships, by competing at the last two world cups, or far more likely competing at the continental qualifying events in the fall, which will be closer to home and which will have generally more reduced fields. Through those avenues, they can earn more world ranking points and hopefully become the top dog of those universality countries and get that last little spot to the OQS series. And lastly, and frankly, the final nail in the coffin for the universality initiative for this year is the requirement to finish in the top 75% of the OQS itself. I frankly just see this as impossible. There is not a Honduran climber that can come top 24 of the 32, some of the 32 best speed climbers in the world. There is not an Icelandic athlete that can come in the top 36 of the best 48 climbers in the world. 
Um, I know it's not exactly the top 48 because if your country has already qualified, you know, your, your maximum two athletes for the Olympics, you're not going to send any people to the OQS. I understand that some of the athletes will have already qualified, so, so take some away as well. But ultimately, these OQS competitions are going to look an awful lot like World Cups. And again, it's not about having one good result in an OQS event. It's about having a consistent result across the three because it is about your ranking. It is about finishing in the top 36 across that series of three OQS events. And that to me is a bridge too far. I simply can't believe in that. One little foot slip could happen and change up a speed competition. We've all seen that happen before. And in lead climbing, you can have a route that ends up in a bit of a bottleneck and really throw stuff for a loop. But across three competitions, across a field that it's going to look an awful lot like the World Cups we've seen this year, I just don't see it as possible. And so if that universality place isn't assigned, it gets reallocated back to the top climbers from the OQS. So instead of spending, sending the top five ranked speed climbers from the OQS, we're going to send the top six. Instead of sending the top 10 combined athletes from the Olympic qualifier series, we will send the top 11. And for me, that's okay. I don't want to give too much space to climbers who frankly aren't aren't uh aren't up for the task we're already giving a spot you know to to the continent of africa to the continent of oceania who very rarely play any kind of relevant role in the sport of competitive climbing and that's enough for me i'm okay getting more top tier star climbers in the olympics rather than sharing spaces with countries that are not just not relevant but are often just not actually at competitions so I hope you understand how the universality place works and I hope you understand why I believe it's going to be a non-factor and why you should not place any bets on any athletes using that spot this time around. If you enjoyed this content, like and subscribe, join the Plastic Weekly Discord, the link's below. You can refer to any of the documents down below if you have any questions or just drop a comment if you need to. And uh, of course, you can support this thing on Patreon if you want to support more content like this. Otherwise, enjoy the World Championships. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we'll see you guys in the next one.